Well, you know what I really miss now that I'm not drinking is eggnog. It oh, just doesn't really? taste the same My without the alcohol God. in well, you it. You like eggnog. Yes. I love it. it tastes, why does it taste uh, like bubblegum? Oh, my God. It reminds me bubble of bubblegum. I guess I can kind of see A that. A little bit. You two need help. You know when the only time you should drink an egg? If you're Sylvester Stallone in a training montage. End of list. <laughs> Oh, guys. Oh, my God. This isn't oh, the egg we, podcast. We God damn it. All right. This is AITA, guys. <laughs> I do that part, damn it. Not anymore. Shannon, stop trying to take over the show. That sounded that sounded like a million bucks. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to AITA Pod. I am joined. It's my podcast. It's his podcast. Shannon. Shannon. I'm so By sorry. By Shannon D and uh, Jake Davey. Hey, guys. Davey. Hello. It's good to be here, guys. Yule, Yuletide here. greetings, one and all. Yeah, Jake just told us yes. about the Yule cat. I was yes. like, I thought he was being funny because he's like, the European Christmas has a Yule cat, but it's real, huh? It's, I think it's just Iceland specifically. Mm. But yes, the Yule cat is, I can't remember the specifics or their full name, uh, but the rule with the Yule cat is, is they <laughs> prowl around in, in the night of yeah. Christmas Eve. And if you are not wearing clothes that you were bought, that was that were gifted to you for oh, Christmas. Oh my God. The cat's going to eat you up. Wait, it, eat you? Yeah. Oh, you're done. Yule this, cat this finds This reminds out. me of the American justice system and marijuana. Like, why <laughs> why did a cat eat you just for not wearing your gift? Calm down. Yeah. It's, and I, could you just lie to the cat? I guess you could, but at that, like, how how omnipotent have is the Yule cat? Have you ever been faced by a Yule cat? You're not going to be able to lie to that. It's supposedly, I think it's like the size of a bear. It's huge. Oh, it's, wow. It's not like a tiny wow. little house it's cat. A big so cat. it's more like a lion. It's, it is portrayed. It's a giant domestic cat. That is how wow. I've seen it portrayed in art. And it's very, Yikes. like, Cheshire cat looking. It's it's malicious. It's And let this, me say, it shows its butthole a lot. And that's one of the reasons that Iceland's tourism is falling. That's oh. a big problem. Well, remember, it, they took the buttholes out of cats the live oh action. yeah Did you hear about is that? that true yeah they had a cut of it that had the butthole the release buttholes. the butthole cut Re- it was a did. whole release thing release the butthole cut yeah, that's funny i had a really good week though guys i actually went snowboarding all week i went to mammoth mountain and so i am kind of switching now i i still don't really love la but i love california mm-hmm. California's you know? and great. it was really great so i i had a lot of unique experiences i got gouged which is always fun i had to get chains you got to put chains on your tires oh so i i thought this was kind of fun i I have a camry as you guys know it's a hybrid i'm a good person and uh you got to put chains on your tires i didn't know how to do this but i I called this snow piercer mode that was fun for me (laughs) and uh, it cost one hundred sixty dollars for these fucking chains at AutoZone. Oh, Brutal, right? Oh. I was like, AutoZone will be reasonable. Is that no. what you meant when you said nice. you got gouged? You got gouged. Well, on that them. was gouge one. Okay. Then gouge oh. two. This is a pseudo gouge. I'm not really sure. It cost fifty bucks to have the chains installed by this guy on the side of the road who claimed to be licensed. So they like kind of make you pull over. They're like, you got to put your chains on. And there's like government signs, you know, like those flashy orange signs. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, I was like, how much is it? He's like, fifty bucks. And I was like, that's a lot. And then it took him about three minutes to put the chains on. And I was like, oh, that was so much money for three minutes. And then I Damn. I asked for a receipt and he's like, what? And I was like, well, you said your license. I just want to, you know, like a paper trail. I don't know how these chains work. You know, yeah. this is my baby, this car. And um, he's like, nobody has ever asked for a receipt ever. That's weird because we've been doing receipts since Babylon. Yeah. Like, right? That is a established part of business it's transactions. Like gaslighting you. I was like, dude, let me get her. So he gave me a receipt and then I gave him a $5 tip because I felt guilty for making him. And it's like fucking cold out, to be fair. It's actively uh, snowing. So he put the chains on for he you? He put the chains on for me. It took him three minutes. Oh, okay. So then I was like, cool. Now I'm emasculated going 20 miles per hour because they say you can go 30 max, but you know, that car's my baby. So yeah, you got to gotta protect slow. it yeah I'm going slow oh, interesting. um anyway go up had an amazing time cutest freaking town ever by the way if anyone lives in near mammoth please let me it is your very place, cute i oh love mountain towns it's the cutest I feel like i'm meant to live in a mountain town even though i'm not like the biggest i, I love skiing but i'm not like you know a gung-ho right biggest yeah. skier in the world thing but i there's just something about mountain towns i yeah. love them everyone oh. is there for the same thing so there's the sense of community you could talk to everyone mm. everyone is like super friendly they all and, have the outdoors the, in common yeah. yeah yeah and a couple of people actually said like summer here is even better i was gonna i was, I was just like, gonna say summer there is always so fun too 
I like off season mountain towns for sure. Yeah. I, if there's a lake nearby, because personally, like I like you said, Shannon, I'm terrible on the slopes. I try to avoid it. But well, I didn't say I was terrible. Oh, okay, Jake, you're, I'm, please don't you put that in my mouth. Right. Jake. Shannon's great. <laughs> Shannon's Shannon, great. Shannon, I perfect. know you said that thank you're an embarrassment you, to your you, family when you. you ski, but <laughs> but you know, uh, I am. I, I am, am probably the worst. People actually throw in my up family. when you put on your ski boots, but. Sorry. We do, actually. <laughs> That's yeah. a weird thing to throw up over. Why are they watching you? Put yeah, on she's so breaks? bad at it. Especially they're <laughs> stinky. She never cleans them in 10 years. All right. <laughs> let's, let's keep the foot chat to a minimum. We so, did a lot of that in the previous You went to a lake? You like a warning. lake? You no, like I like a, a lodge. Guy? I'm what? a, I'm oh, a lodge, lodge guy. guy. Oh, I, I see Ooh. you at a lodge. I oh, love. Lodge. Yeah, I love. You're kind of lumberjacky. Yeah, I look good in a lodge. Yeah, I can see that. Saunter up to the bar. Just chit chat. Chit chat all day with people yeah. having a good time. They got yeah, their workout endorphins great. up. Not me. I'm the lodge guy. I'm just happy to be there. What about um mm. the lodges on the ski slopes and the bread bowls? Ooh, do you yeah. do you guys ever what? get the bread bowls? No, that bowls? sounds amazing. Oh, oh, rookie mistake, Danny. Yeah. You get a bread bowl up there? Oh yeah. Oh, they always right. have a bread bowl. So it's this big ass loaf of bread. Not like a long loaf, a circular one. Then they cut yeah, it. Yeah, like open. a bowl. Yeah, like a bowl, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> Uh, this bowl um, it can be used to I don't know um, convert soup into my tongue. <laughs> yes. So, okay. so like put a in there circular and then you, bowl. I, uh, <laughs> never heard of it. Okay, so then you dip the bread in the bowl. Okay, Jesus Christ, guys, forget it. No, but what kind of no, soup? Uh, what soup do you like yeah. putting in that bread bowl? Minestrone or chili? Um, ooh, okay. I'm a chowder. I'm a chowder. I love guy. a chowder. Nah, I'm a chowder guy. Clams. Chowder. I love yeah. a chowder. You're East Coast. You don't like chowder? Well, I never really was a big seafood person until recently. Oh, okay. And so I don't know. I just don't want seafood in my soup. It's the Fair creamy enough. part that I like. It's, it's not oh, that's the like, I love a corn chowder too. Mm. Oh, I do like oh oh okay. Chowder's great. I like corn chowder. I, I, I hate the fish if you hate the fish. Text, yeah. Texture on a chowder is top notch. You know what I, I used to I've always had kind of like a, I don't know if I like it or if I don't like it, and I finally come around to like confidently like I only like it when it rains. Uh, tomato soup. Oh. I, I only like tomato soup when it rains. When it if rains. it is sunny, what am I doing? This is I, hot ketchup. I For can, me, grilled that. cheese, grilled cheese oh. with it. is really what makes tomato soup sing. Yeah, something that's special. Mm -hmm. point. It's absolutely delicious. I really didn't have any hearty, wonderful meals there, though. I actually ate in my hotel room. I was being kind of cheap. But there was a fireplace, so there was a lot of laying down by the fireplace, which is really nice. That's nice. And let me say, I, I snowboard. I snowboard. I think there's something white supremacist about skiing. I don't know. <laughs> it's older. Snowboarding is new. It's a little bit anti-establishment. No, okay. Can I, I have that? I, you can have it, but I think I know why. It's because in the 80s movies, the good guys yes. always snowboarded yes, and the snobby and the, rich Johnny kids, Tsunami. Yeah. They always ski. He was a person of color, wasn't he? Johnny Tsunami. He was. Yeah, he was yeah. like Hawaiian. Yeah, he's white. It's progressive to snowboard and it is fucking conservative to ski. Stop skiing. I know it's easier to learn, but learn to board, baby. Is it? Is it easier to learn? I thought it was easier to they, learn snowboarding. No, no, no. It's easier to learn skiing. That makes me you're feel going way forward. better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Going forward. I'm terrible on a snowboard. Maybe, I, yeah, maybe I, would, I should try skiing. I, yeah, maybe you should but and then you're gonna you know. i mean i already look like the villain from the 80s movies That's so it would just kind of complete do. the you do. yeah perfect so uh <laughs> you're the new snowboarder huh <laughs> oh my god i'm not sure if anybody's let you in on this but the snow dogs run this mountain so why don't you <laughs> win uh this little okay i'm getting triggered i'm getting yeah. I, 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 why don't you go back down to the public course essay yeah. That, oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. A little bit of racism. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was yeah good. no, that is how the guys yeah, in the 80s movies talk. Is that it's not how I talk. It's not Jake. I did want to tell you guys a Christmas story, and this is the story of my dad drinking my cousin's piss. Oh my gosh. What? The poop hider. Yeah. Oh, the piss drinker. The poop hider and piss drinker. A proud part of the Icelandic Christmas. After the Yule cat comes, the poop hider comes and he guzzles your piss. <laughs> so, what happened is my cousin, I was staying in my cousin's room with my brother during some Christmas vacation. And he assumed that we would, uh, as, a, as a thing of mischief, uh, drink all his Glenlivet whiskey special blend. So he, he took the whiskey out and then peed in the bottle. And let me tell you, it passed. I mean, it really did look like whiskey. Only so, be because you were going to maybe drink it? He, yeah, well, he, he felt certain that we would drink it. He so, thought this was an easy, like, open and shut prank. <laughs> 
and I didn't even notice it. I didn't even freaking know. I didn't even know it was there. So the poop hider, however, did notice it and loves his whiskey, poured himself an ice cold glass of cousin piss. Okay. He said it tasted really bad. (laughs) And so he went to my uncle and he said, hey, can alcohol go bad? And my uncle has been a beverage manager at hotels for literally like 30 years. And he's like, no, not at all. So my dad took another sip of my cousin's piss. Oh, no. And finally, you know, he called my cousin. And then my cousin was like, oh, that is, that's actually my piss. And then, (laughs) and by the way, piss does go bad. Unlike whiskey, it actually does get worse with time. So it was old piss. It gets worse. Uh, Why would you, but you want to drink your whiskey. Well, he poured well, he it into did. another he poured bottle. Into a different oh, vessel. yeah. So, and he, so, but he really wanted you to drink his pee. The prank was supposed to be on me and my brother, but he ended up just nuclear bomb. Yeah. Either way. No, that's not Y-T-I. a prank. That's not a prank. That's like. Does your cousin? Well, hate no. Hold you? on a second. I I think this was a clean prank. He nobody asked permission. They they were stealing. You would have to be stealing. I My guess. dad just drank someone else's alcohol without asking, which, you know, to be fair, I did to him. Whatever. Aren't you like at his house? You're his guest. Well, we were in his bedroom. It wasn't like Wait, even what in, were the you doing in his bedroom. I, I was sleeping there. Oh, I was sleeping over. Okay. I just kind of feel like this is how the villain in the Saw movies would handle his problems. Like, <laughs> this just seems like you're really going from zero to 60. Wait, I actually did something kind of fucked up like oh, this God. when I was yeah. a kid. What'd you do? Well, it didn't end up going through, but my sister and I. I um, decided to pee in ice cube trays and we were going to get... You don't get to make that voice, that face. (laughs) Peeing in an ice cube tray is way grosser. And put it in the freezer. Put it in the freezer, Jake. That's way grosser. There's other food there. That's a contamination issue. And then we wanted to make lemonade for our like family friend who we like, this was down at the shore and we like lived at the shore together. And, but then my sister's best friend who was like the kindest sweetest lady girl not lady girl she was a girl (laughs) (laughs) oopers shannon that's my humor the chance grandma (laughs) um because we were like nine and she denied this but she definitely went and she was very against it and she went and tossed it Toss the ice cube so that, we didn't get to do the prank. That was a good that was a good thing. I know. You're mad at my cousin and not Shannon. No, for that no, shit? I'm equally grossed out. <laughs> I know. I'm equally, equally grossed out. It's not Danny. only just grossed out, it's like so malicious and mean. That's malicious. They yeah. were gonna feed people their piss it, lemonade. That's what, so was your cousin. No, that was under the precondition oh, that, that you were stealing steal from him. So, so okay, if I'm getting okay, this straight, Danny, it. you're saying anybody who has committed light thievery deserves Anything that they get. I'm just saying there's a difference between here's a lemonade, it's my piss, and I've put a bottle in my room that's obviously mine that you're going to drink without permission. Yeah, I get it. I, I there's get a difference, it. Jay. I get it. It's still on the same show. It's like, still not great. It's, yeah. Shannon, don't, you were a piss terrorist. Yeah, I have no. My cousin <laughs> was a piss no. booby trapper and you're a piss terrorist. No, oh, I would I'm, argue I'm so that your sorry. cousin is like a piss Batman villain. Like, society has disrespected me for long <laughs> enough and now they oh, shall drink. Drink yes. of my piss. Good point. It's so like it's very Batman villain where it's like, oh, it's not it's not right, but you can understand why they've been pushed to these extremes it's by a society. Booby trap. It's a booby trap. Kevin McAllister well, was, did booby traps. They still could have fucking killed somebody. Yeah. Was your dad pissed? Yeah, he was. <laughs> this, okay, we just figured it out. This isn't your cousin being a Batman villain. This is your dad's Batman villain origin, origin story, story as the poop hider. Yes. There we go. Oh, there it is. There yep. it is. He, got, he got piss hidden, and now he's poop hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you drink piss? Now you're going to step on a dog shit that you didn't know was there. I'm Danny's father. <laughs> yeah. So have a very Merry Christmas, everybody. And they're going to do a couple Christmas situations, and then we're going to do a bunch of listener submissions. A lot of quick and dirty ones. Thanks for all your submissions. Keep them coming. Uh, I'm going to be covering them more thoroughly. Much love. Rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash AITA pod. Our second situation of the day, folks. AITA for asking my boyfriend to tell his siblings they're on their own for a Christmas gift. But first, it's AITA for not allowing my sister to make her kids food at my house during Mm -hmm. our Christmas party. I come from a broken home, so we have our Christmas with mom's sides the first weekend of December. I, 44M, hosted. Usually my sister and I switch off host duties. 
there's a weird thing where he's being like, I come from a broken home, so obviously we celebrate Christmas the first month, the first week of December. Like, <laughs> I don't know that. Okay. Our calendar broke too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My sister has two daughters who are incredibly picky eaters at 18 and 15. My sister would come to family parties with a box of pasta and a bag of frozen chicken tendies that she will make for her daughters. I want to know if I'm the asshole for what I did here. I knew it's her drill with them, but I've always found it to be so annoying, especially when I'm trying to cook. She's taking up space making the pasta and chicken tenders. This year, I told my wife we will not be letting my sister in the kitchen this year, and the girls will have the choice of eating what I prepared or not eating. My sister accused me of being a cynic and getting joy from watching the girls be uncomfortable. I told her they're old enough to eat like adults. Also, the food I make is pretty standard. I do a filet roast, barbecue ribs, cheesy potatoes, stuffed artichoke, breaded cauliflower, ratatouille, and a salad. That is not standard. That is fucking amazing. That sounds delicious. What a spread. I really want to eat that. Certainly, some of these must be foods that an 18 to 15 year old should be able to eat. Well, the girl sat and ate bread and butter while telling me that my food looked gross. I looked at my sister to calm them down, but told me I deserve this and it's not their fault for being picky eaters. I know I could have just let my sister do her thing, but it was the principle. I'm not sure if I was being a petty asshole or if I had a legitimate reason to be upset. AITA. The 15 to 18 part is interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. And I, I've been I've been on record on the pod saying, you know, sometimes when it comes to food, there is sensory overload things. There's legitimate physical reasons why people can't handle certain food. But sure. I'm also on record saying I really don't like picky eaters. We all are. And yeah, it's ah, but they're 15 and 18 years old. And this is a fucking spread. This is a spread. If you can eat a box of pasta and frozen chicken like cheesy potatoes, why not? But yeah. Pretty bland. Roasted breaded cauliflower. I mean, come on. Well, that's not bland. No, I mean, bland is in easy to eat. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Crazy yeah. food like right. sushi. With- and you, like, I think the polite amount of food to eat at anybody's table is like, have three of the things and then you're fine. Like, you're partaking in the meal just like everybody else. I'm not an artichoke guy myself. I'd, pro- I'd still try a stuffed artichoke. I've never had one. But You've never had a stuffed artichoke? No, I've had normal artichokes and it's just like, eh, eh this is all right. But oh, it's, I, it's, I don't go out of my way for it. I don't it. like an artichoke. Um, I guess I feel my question for you guys is I don't cook. I'm kind of like, is it really that annoying though? I mean, they did offer a solution. What What's the big deal to make some chicken tendies? Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's those in the microwave. There's nothing wrong with doing that, and I think it's probably a point of pride to say yeah. no, you can't do that this year. And you're always picking a fight when you tell somebody. No, that's not how you're raising your kids tonight. You're doing it by my rules. Mm-hmm. That's yes, how you, that's what I was thinking. Pasta, that's gonna start a fight. I I just feel like. The principle here is so like easy so to make thin. Pasta. That it's doesn't like, take up that much room. No, you and need also one pot. time too. Nothing. Like it's not long at all. Yeah, you could actually you would actually probably need to start when all the other food is finishing right. in order for it to be good to go when dinner is getting served. Right. So I don't think that's that big of a deal. It's more just like I don't like their behavior as an eighteen and a fifteen year old. Right. So I'm gonna like put my dad hat on for whatever reason and just have them play by my rules. Yeah. That's kinda, I'm kinda ready to ding and this went. NTA top comment JRM 1102 writes they're 18 and 15 not little kids they can be picky you don't have to accommodate that okay but OP wasn't was accommodating, accommodating. Yeah. no he wasn't accommodating wasn't. Wasn't. he didn't have to do anything mm-hmm. he was banning this from being accommodated mm-hmm. right this, he wouldn't let somebody else cook the food my ding on this is how the how the mom reacted is like Essentially, like creating more hostility at the table when yeah. you're 15 and you're 18 year old are saying this food looks gross. I'm only going to eat bread and butter. Yeah. That is where you lose support around the room, I would say, of like when you're looking back and saying this is what you deserve. It's like you're teaching your kids some terrible fucking behavior there of like that would be a moment I think as a parent to step in and look, look, your uncle's being a dick. I'm sorry about this, but like just be polite. Be, be the people you are, we'll get, th- we'll get through it. And so there is that issue where I do have an objection with how she's choosing to handle the way that her kids are behaving, especially the 18-year-old. You're 18, you're heading out into the world. The world isn't always going to let you eat pasta and chicken tenders. Yeah, but but this but not only that, though, Jake, this was their tradition, yeah. right? Because she, he actually wrote that my sister would come to family parties. So this has been a thing 
that has been done repeatedly. Yeah, and you're picking the fight now. Now you're laying down the law on this mm. bullshit? It's, it's way easier to just not cause a problem about it, that's also, for sure. Also, why doesn't she just make it before and bring it? Well, then you got, like, you know how noodles get when it's uh, been sitting there. It kind of just congeals. And I guess also it's like, well, it takes so quick to make yeah, it. I can't nothing. imagine why you would have a problem yeah. with it. It's so low lift. OP also wrote, I knew that is her drill with them. So this had been established. OP then decides to lay down the law. Other people had suggestions like pack a sandwich or stuff your face beforehand. Top dissenting Aww. comment went to Sunny Bunny Hop Hop. I think that's a little poem. I think it's fair that Aww. you don't want sister in the kitchen interrupting while you're cooking and your nieces seem to have a dreadfully limited palate. It. Still, why TA for saying your nieces have to eat what you prepare or nothing at all? Tell your sister to bring something pre-cooked yeah. or that she can quickly heat up right before you guys eat. That would be a more reasonable compromise. Yeah. Denying somebody food for your own pride is never a good look. That's for mm. sure. And it's denying people, I think, which isn't that big of a deal. Like, what, one burner and a microwave to get the tendies up to snuff? Yep. I mean, right. like, shut up. Is as your it, kitchen that small? Going back to, I think I've mentioned before how I was like a really, really picky eater as a kid. Um, like I just never really understood why it was such a problem for me to just eat what I, what I wanted to eat, right. especially when I wasn't inconveniencing other people. And my parents eventually got around to that because I would be like, I think, look, if you just fed me rice, uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, and applesauce, I'd be happy. And they're like, okay, well she just listed all this stuff. That's like not hard to make yeah. and is healthy. So like, let's just let her eat it. It's like, why <laughs> just I, 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 people feel like get on their high horse about like, well, you need to eat what I made or nothing. Like, why? We, we touched on this in a previous episode, and I do think it comes down to when somebody is expressing their love language, and for many, many people, that is cooking their family food. When that food is cooked, it is hard sometimes to look past the effort and the love that you put into this meal for your family. So when that meal gets rejected, like imagine, let's just say your love language is writing songs and you wrote and you write a song for the family and you're playing it at, and I know this is a weird example, but follow me. <laughs> um, and you want to sing this song for the family. And there's two people at the end of the couch with their arms crossed and headphones on saying, no, I don't, I don't like this music. I don't like this music. I don't like your song. I don't want to listen to it. That is how somebody will interpret a picky eater. But I, I don't agree with that. Right. I think you're right where it's just like, okay, yeah, you can, you can eat that. The point yeah. is we're here. Well, uh, because it is like, I understand your analogy there, but it is just so different because it's food. You can't ha you cannot control what your taste buds yeah. tell you. Yeah. Like I, I didn't try everything as a kid, but I definitely like, was pretty open to trying some as long things. As you try especially it. as I got older. Yeah. I definitely when I got older. But it was like, I'm sorry, I'm trying it and I don't fucking like it. Yeah, yeah what are you gonna do? It's, it's and not tastes, personal. Yeah, you can't take it personal. Yeah, it's like comedy. Yeah. You know? Like nobody's gonna have no one's gonna think not everyone's gonna think the same joke's funny. Is taste the most subjective thing on the planet? Like is there yeah. anything more subjective than that? The acquired taste yeah. is a concept. Mm -hmm. I think when people are closed off to experience, you know, they become like afraid and they refuse to try things. But I mean, when it comes down to it, if you are trying stuff, like you're telling me you don't really like artichokes, mm -hmm. what can I say? I can eat I can eat artichokes. The best example for me in this situation is if somebody if somebody made me a lobster dinner, mm -hmm. I'd be in a super awkward position because I know lobster is widely considered to be a delicacy by everybody. Something about the texture, I cannot get it down. I, I cannot know, keep you've it said down. This no, but it's the only example I have for food because I love food Everything in general. Yeah. yeah, I can eat anything. But lobster is just one thing where I would have to be like, I, I'm so sorry, unless you want to see like my body force this food yeah. back out of me, I probably shouldn't eat. Well, and this. then I think it's so funny and annoying when people get mad at other people for not liking what they like and that's where ego and pride comes in yeah. because it's yeah. it's your some people take well i don't care for that as you're stupid for liking that and that's yeah. where conflict comes in but that's on the person receiving the information not the person giving it mm -hmm. yeah i mean i i think with music with comedy there is a literacy there is a learning that you know people can be ignorant where it's like oh you know if you're like oh shakespeare sucks it's like well we sort <laughs> you're of just trying to start shit at that yeah point. <laughs> it's like we all kind of know that it's boring to read but it kind of doesn't suck like you got to learn more you know mm -hmm. if, if that's your attitude and i think what you know what comedy you watch, what music you consume obviously creates your musical taste. 
But I think with food, even though there is an aspect that that's true, I do think like, look, I, what, what, I'm going to feed you the right lobster and you're going to change your mind about right. lobster. It's like, it's a ridiculous thing to take personally. Mm-hmm. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. And I think as long as you're, if anybody is a picky eater, as long as you're willing to try and like, it's very easy to sit at a meal and look like you're eating. It's very easy to do that. Yeah. But in this scenario, it'd be tougher. Yeah, well, because all eyes are on them now. Well, yeah, yeah. they didn't have any eating. food. I, yeah. I mean, so what I'm going for here, I, I think we found it. I, I didn't know if you guys were going to come differently because I don't fucking make food ever. AITA for not allowing my sister to make her kids food at my house during our Christmas party. I'm ready to go at YTA, bro. Yeah, yeah I think YTA. There's no, there's no inconvenience to you because of the food that they're making, like or marginal. It it's takes not like they're breading their own chicken. Half hour tops. Yeah, half hour yes. tops. Oh my god, you're right. Twenty minutes, honestly. Yeah. Tendies and past. And yeah. you're gonna need to do it when everything is already in the serving portion of yes. the evening, anyway. So. It's yeah. And like I grew up in a very old school household where and I've said this before, too, but it's just like you get food put in front of you you're gonna eat it. Mm. And it's just like, you know, that does come with a weird pressure around mealtime of like, oh, it would have been cool to have autonomy to say like, oh, I, I don't like this. But I think that also brings us back to the rugged individualism thing of like kids these days are so spoiled. They won't eat food that's put in front of them. And it's just like they don't like the food, man. You don't have to turn this into like an attack on their character mm. because they're baby, right, they're right. children. They right. are, granted the 18 year old I would if I was at that table I wouldn't say anything but I would kind of be looking at that 18 year old like man I hope you get way cooler way faster because <laughs> this yeah. is not the age to be pulling this shit well I, I yeah I like that you brought us back to that too because it's also the delusion that somebody liking your food is all about how good your food is it's like yeah. well it also might be about the fact that they just really like barbecue ribs yeah. because ribs are amazing I've made yeah. my own ribs and overcooked the ever living shit out of them and guess what it was still pretty decent because they're freaking ribs I will give yeah. OP this you're making a full rack of barbecued ribs for Christmas with all that other stuff you're doing that is high effort dinner that is high effort dinner. I can understand why you are that protective over it. But picking this fight now, and it almost seems, I'm wondering if the 18 year old, the, them being 18 at this point, flip that switch for them. Where yeah. it's just like, no, you are a junior adult now. You're going to eat food. And like the, right. the his own bias against the, I'm going to use a phrase I'm assuming this guy assigns to his relatives snotty that snotty attitude and i don't necessarily view this as snotty except for how they treated it at the table i do disagree with that and it's a ding on the sister and her kids yeah i think you're right with that I, I think they didn't need to be that way but i just didn't think it brought us around any of if you're gonna be that way you should just leave if it's that important to you because if you're just gonna stick around to be difficult and like make the guy feel terrible about it you're not being constructed the situation either. yeah i mean he kind of created the situation he did he did for sure but at that so, point i think it's polite for you to protect your peace and leave uh, but i yeah i think that it was weird for him to pick this fight now after it's been such an established thing that's gone on for years i think so the other the other thing i had too is like there is something about food that p preparing food and like i had this problem in a past relationship because you know i think sometimes it's like it can become very consuming for the person making the food it's like that's all they're going to yeah. be doing the whole night and i just i had this problem in a past relationship where i'd be like i don't really like how you're completely occupied like nobody really cares about the quality of the food like we could just order food we could get pizza and you're going to be in the kitchen the entire night fixated on this mm -hmm. and so i tried to like to kind of create this concept of like this is really more like a food show because the, the night actually becomes all about the food mm -hmm. and i just felt like that was a way of saying like just because you want to do this like the the kind of night we're gonna have like i do feel like it is much like a comedy show where it's like yeah it's a group activity because you can watch me do comedy but in mm -hmm. the end it's kind of centered around the comedy which is me which is you giving me a, a, a me thing and i felt like what i was trying to get out with this food show thing was that this night was going to center around her and the yeah. food and it's just because it is a normal thing and a default, that doesn't mean that it isn't a sort of give. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, that makes sense. It's like a performance for her. Yeah. She's, out, she's working. She's working. But exactly. My the, uh, the closest friend I have who truly loves, loves, loves cooking, when he's in that mode and he's cooking, he it reminds me of like every scene I've seen in a movie where somebody who loves music is making music. Mm. He is in his own realm. He right. is locked in. The world is tuned out. And he is blissful 
stressful. And I don't think that people have that much love for cooking. They like doing it, but it is hard work and it is really tiring. And like my mom likes cooking. She enjoys it, but she's also like, you know, I, I help her when I can. I'm I'm not as skilled at cooking as I would like to be. I help her when I can, but she is the star of the cooking show, so to speak. Right. And we we just try to add levity to her because we appreciate like she is the person in the house who's really driving the meal forward so we try to like be her support system around it and i think like the best thing that you can do when you're in a family with somebody like that or you're in a partnership with somebody like that is yeah treat it like a show like be be their corner person be the like super like stoked and happy for them my girlfriend's the the cook between the two of us and i just try to like give her all the auxiliary sous chef stuff that i can in the background and just thank her for doing this really wonderful kind thing for us. It's a skill that I totally lack and anytime yeah. I have a skill that I completely lack that somebody's willing to give to me, I I treat them like a demigod for for the process of that happening. Yeah. It's like, well, if you didn't do this, we wouldn't have it. So, thank you so much for that. Yeah, yeah. But I understand where you're coming from too of like it also depends on the holiday and the context and like why. I don't want to do the food show. I don't yeah. want to be your food sous chef. I mean, it's not that I'll never do it. It's that to me it's a give. It's I'm yeah. giving you something and obviously relationships are about compromises, but I'm like, why don't we just order or fucking pizza. I, I don't think I can go with you there because I, I'm just so appreciative that somebody would make food for me. It's such a love yeah. language. It's so, okay. it's so care. But if somebody is like always making food that you didn't ask them to make and they're always asking you to give that time to them as well, I can see why that would cause friction in a relationship. Well, I think you're more meaning when you're having friends over. Right. Either way, I don't want to. I don't like. I eat over the sink, and I eat <laughs> like an animal, and mm. I don't want to get in a whole involved process. Generally, oh, okay. so I'm like. So even date night. Well, if you'd it's rather it, she didn't cook for you. Yeah, no. Why? To me, that's not fun. Oh, interesting. I'd rather go get food. But anyway, Jake's a better boyfriend, and I, and then I am, and, and Jake and I are incompatible, so it's it's, it's a hard day. For <laughs> well, everybody. neither of us can cook, so that would that would oh, work out great for you. I guess you. that would be good. That oh, would so yeah, maybe that we would, are compatible. Yeah, there Not would never Jake, be any though. issues. No, yeah. I I mean I don't need home cooked meals either. I'm fine eating takeout. Like I have to monitor myself yeah. on thanks to Postmates. Like I can't fucking stop. It's just yeah. like well, I could have food that somebody's better at making than I am. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know, but it's more expensive. It's so much more. Well, I eat a lot of crackers and dips, and that shit isn't that Yeah, didn't expensive. you? So you uh, exclusively uh, subsisted off of bugles for two years in college. I did, yeah. And uh-huh. I did begin to take on a conical shape. Yeah, we called you witch fingers because yeah, your fingernails hurt, actually turned into hurt bugles. my feelings, actually, but... Um, anyway, I think we agree on this one. AITA for not allowing my sister to make her kids food at my house party during a Christmas party. We are saying YTA. 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 Please rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod. Please submit. We're going to get to a bunch of submissions later. But now it's AITA for asking my boyfriend to tell his siblings they're on their own for a Christmas gift. I, 24F, have been dating my boy, 25M, for almost four years. Every Christmas since we started dating, I've gotten a gift from my boyfriend's parents. My boyfriend usually gets a joint gift from his siblings, 19F and 22M, and waits until one or two days before to run and get something. I suggested to my boyfriend that we do a gift card to the local casino with his siblings as a gift to his parents this year so we wouldn't be so he wouldn't be stressed and we could give them a bigger gift card that they normally would be able to get. He thought this was a good idea and said he'd ask his siblings. My boyfriend asked and they said yes. He asked them if I could be a part of it and they said no. His brother and sister said that since it was their only gift to their parents this year, they wanted it to be just them. My boyfriend said okay and they said they would get the casino gift card anyways. This made me really upset. I was the one who came up with the gift idea, and now they're trying to take the idea as their own and not include me. I told my boyfriend I do not want them using my idea and that they should come up with their own gift. My boyfriend says he doesn't want anything to do with this because they will be mad at me. AITA for not wanting his siblings to take my gift idea and to be on their own for a Christmas gift. Hmm. Well, I definitely see how the siblings are being a little petty here, not including her. But then I also do think that her saying you can't use my idea of a gift is, is like even more petty. Copyright. 
Copyright. I said that. I said that out loud. It's my idea. <laughs> yeah, it's like kind of a dick move to be like, oh, we're going to get on that, but not you. But then it's like, it does sound crazy. So I'm then kinda, no one's going to get it for them? Well, if it's a gift card, it's it's, and I'm sorry to say this word, but it's fungible. So why don't you just get a fucking <laughs> gift card? And then they, it's the same as getting one gift card as getting two gift yeah, cards. Yeah, you both uh, can get it for them if you want. It's Gift cards are a great gift in that sense because also like, Oh wow! Well, you thought of a gift card? Like that's not like ingenuity. Oh, thing. Yeah. Santa! Santa two is here. <laughs> gift card. What a concept! I'm reinventing Christmas. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty basic, but I mean, it is mean spirited to be like, "Oh, we're getting that gift. You're not." I I, I think that's a ding. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's mean. That I don't know why sense. she couldn't just be included on it. Well, yeah, just be, chip in. Because uh, yeah. the boyfriend's included, right? I guess, no, the boyfriend. No, all siblings. My boys, I think. Oh, okay. Well, he asked them if I could be a part of it, and they said no. Yeah, so, so it's I am like. Just the brother, the sister, and the boyfriend. Exactly right. And I am like, why did he ask that question? Wasn't it kind of a foregone conclusion that that they would be part of it? Like, why would he be like, can, can the person whose idea this was be part of it? Like, yeah. I, I, why did he ask that? It feels like he set himself up. Yeah, and also, like, if I were the brother and sister, I'd be like, hell yeah, so I can pay less. Let's split it four ways instead of three. It's so weird. Yeah, it's especially, yeah, when there's, it's something that you can add more and more value to. So it it's just seems like it's very petty. It's very petty. And, like, do you think you're going to get an award for best gift card, too? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the best gift ever. It's and so it's then it has a gift in the name. This is an established way to give a gift yeah. on a card. Yeah. For the local casino? And I then mean, so then if she casino. doesn't want them using the idea, does that mean that then she is going to take the idea back and then it's just her and her boyfriend? Because the siblings always do a gift together. Yeah. So then in this scenario, she just doesn't want them to have the gift card at all? It's wild. It's a strange way to look at the world. I like, feel if I were her, I would definitely be like a little bit hurt that the sibling said that, like I couldn't be included. But I would just be like, all right, that yeah. sucks. That mm. hurts my feelings a little bit, but do your thing. Mm -hmm. I'll get them a candle. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'm ready to ding them. I feel like this is an awkward position. I mean, you're right that it is a pretty non-idea idea, but it but it was OP's thing, yeah. and it was their suggestion. And maybe the local casino is like their favorite spot or something, and maybe it means like you know something kind of special. It's not just like it could have been thoughtful. Yeah, you're right. If, we it, don't necessarily if know. it wasn't a gift card, I would. I would subscribe a lot more to that, but because it's a gift card, it's not like you thought like, oh, you know what? Remember he was stationed on that one Navy ship during his time in the <laughs> yeah, service? Yeah. I found a miniature shipbuilder who's going to recreate that right. ship for them at the time that they served totally. on it. That's a dick thing to be like, called it. That's, yeah. that's our gift now. And We're going to do like, that. And I'd be like, no, you're yeah. not doing that. If I'm not included, then you're not doing it. Right. Because I'm doing it. But it's a gift card. So it's just like, <laughs> hey, yeah. you know the most basic gift you can give Anyone yeah. aside from twenty dollar bills? <laughs> it's, That's true. It's and yeah, I I don't know. I have a hard time taking it seriously when you're pitching like you're pitching the Charlie Brown Christmas of basic ideas for like it's like the thing in Christmas everybody knows. Mm -hmm. it, everybody knows gift cards uh, already. But exist. yeah, and I'm with you, but I just kind of do feel like they still stole it. If it's so basic and easy, then why don't they not steal it? Right. You know, it feels like. Well, I think. Well, hey, hold on a second here. I just thought of something. I don't think maybe perhaps the boyfriend did not mention that it was her idea. And so mm. they are just thinking like, oh, yeah, great. This is the present from the, the siblings. And then he was like, oh, and by the way, can Cheryl be on it? Right. And they're like, oh, no, we always just do the siblings thing. Cheryl wants to So it's her not to. like he said, hey, he Cheryl brought had it this in, really man. good idea. Yeah. Instead, he was just like, hey, this is what we're going to do. Right. You got me. I'm ready to let it. I'm ready to say. AITA for asking my boyfriend to tell his siblings they're on their own for their Christmas gift. It's no assholes here. Yeah. Oh, really? He brought it in weird. I could go ESH. Why? I got, I got Nothing go no happened. assholes here. I, I really don't like the way that um, the OP is reacting to this because it's like, okay, what, now you want to have World War Three with your in-laws? That does suck. Your, your brother and sister-in-law? That does suck. Why World War Three? Why? Because look, they'll be mad at her. My boyfriend says he doesn't want anything to do with this because they will be mad at me. So I would never, well, I don't want to ever do anything to make my 
boyfriend's family mad yeah. at me. Whether it's his youngest brother, like any his aunt, his cousin, none of that. I don't ever want to be on their bad side. I feel like the boyfriend brought it in innocently, but didn't say it was their idea. They rejected it. Mm -hmm. Right. They rejected having OP be part of the gift. And now boyfriend is being like, I don't want to deal with this because it really isn't that important. That's why I'm leaning no assholes here because I'm like, this is close to a non idea. Yeah, and that's my biggest thing. Well, I also I, can ding the boyfriend by by not just being like, all right, how about you and I do that? And I'll tell them to uh, I'll give them another idea. I, I definitely agree with Shannon that there is an everyone sucks here argument, but my biggest contention here is that this is so nothing. This is so stupid. This is so devoid of any kind of flavor or this yeah. is a pretty juiceless situation, if we're being honest. There's it's nothing so for me to tiny. put in my cup. Let's let it go. The boyfriend is the oldest out of the siblings, so they usually follow probably follow his lead. Yeah. So I think the boyfriend could take more charge on this and make it a situation like kind of like what you were saying is is just explain to them. Oh, you're right. The boy that the, it was yeah. her idea. He's so 25 can she M. either be in it on with us or I'll help you guys come up with something else. Yeah. Yeah. All right, That's I'll give you that. He's the big brother. I'm yeah. ready to move on. I can't talk about this fucking gift card anymore. Okay. <laughs> ATA for asking my boyfriend <laughs> to tell everyone here is under 25 in their defense. Yeah. Asking my boyfriend to tell his siblings they're on their own for a Christmas gift. I think we are going to say NTA and your boyfriend is. He should step up to the little kids, the 19F and the 22M. He should. Yeah. yeah. I think it that was works, your idea. Now, now, please stop talking about this. Football is on. We'd all rather yeah. watch that than listen to you. I don't even like football. <laughs> I call it sports ball to upset Jake. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Guys, please rate, review, and subscribe. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod. Only five bucks a month. Get access to the Discord. Jake is in the Discord. Shannon's in the Discord. Mm -hmm. Sarah's in the Discord. Yeah. Over 140 bonus episodes. Great discussions. Um, and I'd really appreciate it. And uh, here we go. Another listener submission. AITA for not helping Spanish speaking customers because I don't speak Spanish. I work for a car dealership as a receptionist. There's me, I work full time and two part timers. Neither of us speak Spanish well enough to professionally help a customer. Typically we transfer them over to parts, the parts department, mm -hmm. because all three employees over there know Spanish as their first language. One of the people over there got mad at me just because quote, I'm not even trying to help the customer. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm trying to help the customer by getting them to someone who can help them faster than I can and someone they can understand fully, AITA. When it says one of the people over there, meaning the parts department, it sounds like the parts department is just a little bit frustrated to having to do their job. The receptionist mm. desk, desk job. Yeah. I can see. How that oh, would be really yeah. That would be frustrating. Like we're over here. We're supposed to be. Yeah, for we're parts. supposed to be doing this. And yeah. we keep sending, which a very large majority of the United States speaks Spanish. Yeah, and sure. a lot of it's their um, first language. And yeah, there could be some circumstances where their Spanish, I'm sorry, their English isn't terrible, right. but it's like, oh, you speak Spanish here, let me just transfer you. I think, I think you're dead on where the friction in this situation is coming from departments in particular. Mm -hmm. I, I've been at a few, I was at a few stores that had specific departments and one of them, it was really kind of more of like a gumbo, like, okay, I don't work in this department, but I'll help you buy a TV, who cares? Mm -hmm. um, but then other departments, like in the computer department, Department specifically, you kind of if you don't know your way around PCs and PC building and like graphics cards and like how to talk turkey, that's the department where people need somebody who knows their shit to talk to like be like, hey, I, I need some input on right. like I'm deciding between these two things. So it can cause a lot of frustration when you're pulling people from some departments into other departments and it can just kind of cause a slowdown. So I see the friction there. Definitely. But I think OP has a very solid point where you are respecting the customer time mm -hmm. way more by getting them to somebody who can actually help and yeah. fuck this like narrative the customers want an experience that is almost never true customers want to go in and they want to get the fuck out and they want to get on with their lives and mm -hmm. they want it to be they want to feel like they're a priority while they're in there so i think you're showing a lot more respect to the customer i think you need to be very very appreciative and careful about how you approach your colleague who has a skill you don't have to take over work for you because that is what you're doing that's fair. Oh, yeah. It's work they can't do, work they ostensibly weren't hired mm -hmm. to do. So I feel like this needs to be a policy. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a policy. The manager needs to know and you need to say, like, am I supposed to try my best to help someone, which generally is going to yield frustration on their end and not solving their problem quickly, just inefficient. Yeah. Or 
parts department will be fielding the Spanish customers. Because I, I also think a good solution to this, and I know they already have the appropriate number of employees that they need probably for the receptionist, but hire on someone that's bilingual. That's Well, it sounds like yeah. they had a bilingual person, and that was like the only person there. No, oh, no. Typically, there's three employees over at the Spa- uh, uh, that speak Spanish in the parts department. Oh, okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. So... So the parts department keeps getting pulled away to do the receptionist job. And I'm sure it's not every day. Yeah. But it's still, I I can see how that's still a hassle for them. And also just like it is when you start picking it apart, suddenly you are doing more work because you speak Spanish and that's kind of fucked up. That's frustrating. That's that's a tough pill to swallow for sure. I personally do think OP, you're throwing your hands up maybe a little too quick. You should try to help the person. Yeah. That seems to make a little more sense to me. I mean, there's a lot of people who split the difference. Like, yeah, they don't speak English well, but you know, I don't I I guess I don't know why people call car dealerships. Uh, Especially a lot. Well, car dealership is interesting because that is somewhere where people are going to need to have really clear, concise That's communication. True. This isn't, I'm using big box retail as my example. And if I didn't speak the same language as somebody, I could usually figure out what yeah, department be like, they Nintendo were looking Nintendo Wii for. cost. You'd be right. like, OK, yeah, I got what you want. Mm. Yeah. Just like the Batman. The Batman. And it's just like the Batman on DVD. Yes. Okay. Over here. Right, and it's like, right, right, but right. that's a lot different than when it's like I'm coming in with very specific questions about this Jeep, this Jeep Wrangler. Right. Like that's, yeah. uh, and, and to be fair, the receptionists probably do end up transferring them to a different department because they have questions about that stuff anyway. Well, but then it's like, you know, if you're working in the parts department and somebody is coming in to buy a new car that's oh, not that's related not to you, them, yeah. yeah, then you're becoming a middleman and you have like a million things going on in the back that yeah. you could be doing. And Pay the parts people more. Yeah, true. I, I think I, it's what you, going back to what you were saying. It's a management thing. The I think The manager so. needs to get involved with this and figure out how they're going to field these and I, I think OP can look Customers. good here. I think OP can be like, hey, I'm concerned because, you know, uh, I don't speak Spanish. We're kind of doling out this work to the parts people. They're getting frustrated, and I'm just concerned because I want to make sure the customer has the best possible experience. Mm-hmm. And you can raise it to your manager, and I think that'll make you look good, OP. Yeah, and, that's and true. And big, big realization that I that I had, and I, I'm trying to learn Spanish right now. It's going slowly. I have a harder time learning different languages. But if you are a bilingual person, and you, especially if you're fluent in more in two languages or more, you bring that up in that job interview and you factor that into your pay because you should be making more. You have skills that other people on this team won't have, particularly if you're in a naturally bilingual environment like mm. Southern California or French Canada right. or like any of these places where languages exist simultaneously. Yeah. If you can speak both, you are providing a service that other people on the staff don't have. Totally. So you always re- respect your value in that job interview and bring that point up and and make an argument for a higher pay rate yep as for not helping spanish because spanish speaking customers because i don't speak spanish i think we agree it's no assholes here yeah, yeah no assholes fine. here yep oh poor parts, right. poor parts guys though yeah, yeah. scrambling all around working yeah and let me say anyone who has to go under a car you need to be paid more that's a, that's a lot and the ground is always so cold you know <laughs> true i had to take off these tire chains i mean i didn't even do it and it was a lot it was a lot of work AITA for telling my boyfriend my feelings were hurt on his birthday. I, 23F, have been dating my boyfriend, 28M, for a year and a half. It just so happens that the six-month dating mark falls the day before his birthday. Oh, no. Now, I grew up in a big birthday family. Birthdays were always well celebrated, and I've always tried to do that for the other people in my life. Because of that, both last year at our six months and this year at our year and a half, I booked a night away for us the weekend before those days. I had told him the month prior not to plan anything that weekend and had been hyping up his birthday since then. We had a great time on this year's trip, and while we were driving back, we started talking about our plan for his actual birthday. I confirmed that I would head to his house around the time he would get back from work to celebrate with him. A little backstory. He has a friend that comes over pretty much weekly to play video games, and that has been happening since a bit after we started dating. We've gotten to a handful of bickerings over these nights, not because I'm bothered that he comes over, but because my BF will completely ignore me the entire Mm -hmm. night. I'm talking not a single word, and he won't answer or return my texts or calls if I try to get a hold of him. A few other pieces of backstory that will apply later are that I have an almost two-year-old dog that is a big chewer, so I can't really leave her unsupervised for very long, and my BF's roommates also have two cats that don't like my dog very much to occupy the common living space. So here's where things went south. 
The night the friend usually comes over happened to fall on the day of his birthday. They usually don't confirm until the last minute, so prior to this birthday convo, nothing was set up. Right after we confirmed our plans for his birthday, he asked if he should invite the friend over. I, of course, said, honestly, I, of course, said, it's your birthday. Do what you want to do. But I was honestly sad because I knew if the friend came over, I wouldn't actually get to celebrate with him. He'd focus on gaming all night and not talk to me. I checked the night before his birthday and he still hadn't asked of his friend if he wanted to come over. Because of that, the day of his birthday, I packed myself and my dog up and arrived at his house as promised. I waited alone in his room for 45 minutes before he arrived and I knew he had returned when I heard the laugh of his friend, whom I hadn't heard was actually coming. Nothing I could do about the friend at that point, so I went out to the living room to visit with them. When I go out there, I see that he had bought food for himself, his friend, and both of his roommates, but nothing for me. I smiled it off, but it bothered me because he knew I was coming. I went and fixed myself a quick dinner when they had finished eating, and when I was wrapping up, my boyfriend turned on the game they were playing that night. I, of course, am not a gamer and also had my dog to look after that really can't be in the living room without being leashed because of his roommate's cats, so I retreated to his bedroom, where I spent the entire night alone aimlessly scrolling TikTok and watching Netflix. My feelings were hurt. I had made a ton of effort to make his birthday special more than anyone in his life, and I was the one alone, not getting to actually celebrate with him. Now here's where I fear I may have been the asshole. When he returned late that night after giving his friend a ride home, my BF could tell I was upset and asked me what was wrong. I told him my feelings were hurt, but I didn't want to start anything on his birthday. He told me to share anyway. And so I explained the night from my perspective. He asked why I didn't come hang out with them, and I calmly explained that I have no knowledge of what was happening in the game and I had my dog to look after. He apologized, but I could tell he was upset. It's days later and I still feel horror about it because it was his birthday. Should I have just bit my tongue? AITA. Quoting the sticker, there's a lot to unpack here, people. Yeah, yeah. there is. Um, First thing that comes to mind is communication is always so, 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 so important. And without any judgment getting passed anyway, one, one way or the other, there needs to be way, way more communicating in this relationship from that little snapshot that we just saw. Um, when communication is happening at the last possible second for it to be received, in this case, the night of a birthday after the crime had already been committed, that is going to leave everybody in the process feeling really raw because the boyfriend is upset that his birthday is ending on conflict. You're upset that it took all the way to the end of his birthday for the conflict to come out. Um, so all that being said, um, fellas, uh, people, people who are boyfriends in their relationship be very mindful at all times when you are choosing to play video games and how you behave when you are playing those video games because i love video games i think they're a great medium but it is so easy to look like an absolute fucking clown yeah if you are prioritizing video games over certain things one of those things being keeping your girlfriend involved in the evening and communicating. Mm -hmm. So, ironically, Jake is the gamer, but I am actually here to defend the gamer because, OP, you seem really sweet, and thank you so much for your submission, but I just see a lot of neediness here. I think right off the bat, the fact that we are celebrating a six-month dating mark is a little intense. Well, now, I did that. It's a passing. It's a passing. Yeah, thing, you're, it's not like you're going to do a year and a half, two years and a half, but the six-month mark, that's special when yes. you're just in a new relationship. Uh, Ma'am, this, yeah. this was their year and a half. Oh. Yeah. oh, it was a year and a half. It wasn't it six It just months. so happens that the six-month dating mark falls a day before his birthday. She later says because of that, both last year at our six months, that was the first six months. Oh, so, yeah. Okay, I will own up and admit, like, Jackie jokingly asked me uh, uh, at our year and six month mark of like, what are we going to do for it? And I very firmly said nothing. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a thing. It's only years now. Yeah, that's uh, but OK. So I I, yeah. I mean, I don't have a problem. I'm not, I'm it's not cute. criticizing it's cute. it. And look, if it, uh, some people like to have little events and stuff, you guys know I don't have a good personality. I threw an apple party. We're going to talk about that in the future. But. You know, I don't have any problem with this, but I do think it is a little needy. It's a little it's a little bit of creating a celebration um, and you might not be realizing it, but you're kind of putting some weight on the other person. So it's kind of an ask. Yeah, yeah right? and it's his birthday. It's his birthday. And I, you're making so, it about you the guys. Well, actually, the day that um, 
Max and I officially started dating was my birthday. Oh, okay. But we just use our anniversary as like our first date because sure. I'm like I'm not sharing our my birthday with our fucking smart good move. Yeah, our anniversary. He almost because, got you with that. That would have meant. <laughs> well, also because like if we didn't work out, I wouldn't want my birthday to be like tainted with the memory of like that was our anniversary. Yeah, no, yeah. good move. So. That's actually even was our anniversary, and I didn't want it affiliated with that. But this is the six month anniversary. Yeah. And a year and a half you're doing? Come right. on. So, although I do have to say, I did like make a post about my year and a half of not drinking, but that's whatever. Dead. That's I can dead. Say whatever. That Who gives I a want. fuck? <laughs> you got it. You were still listening likes. I think that OP <laughs> is coming on very strong here. And OP, I like you. I can tell you're a really sweet person. And, you know, I, I think. I, I think though you're you're coming off real strong here. I think you we are. Also, oh, sorry. Well, there's also this comment that I did more than anyone else for him in his entire life, and I'm just concerned was about it entire life or for that birthday. For the birthday, I thought it was specifically for that birthday. Well, in his life, but for the birthday, I think. Yeah. Um. What I was gonna say is I, I agree with you on that. That is that is not a healthy scope to look at things in. Like, thank you factoring in. You know, oh, I do this much for this person. That that may very well be true, but it's not gonna do you any favors looking at the world through that scope. Um, what I I would like to backtrack a little bit here because where I think a lot of the issue is coming from when this one particular friend is over, girlfriend becomes invisible. She's not there. Mm -hmm. He's not responding to her. She's like, so is that a reflection on how the boyfriend views the partner? Or is that no. a reflection of him being a young guy who gets who's not used to splitting time between his partner and his friends? I wow, we're we're really not seeing this the same way. I viewed that as yet another aspect of OP's neediness. There's nothing wrong with your partner having a night where they don't text you and call you because they're doing something. I see. I interpreted I, this as they're in the same house and she's there, and yeah. he's literally no. like she's like she'll be in the room. No, so. it is. For, there's two. There's two scenarios. There's two. Thank you. Yes. Is she? It's either they are ha playing the games at OP's boyfriend's house or the friend's house, and when they're at the friend's house, he doesn't call or text her all night, which is reasonable. which is fine. But when they're in the same house and he's not saying a word to her, not responding to her, trying to get his attention and shit, yeah. that is that is weird. And I feel like the boyfriend could avoid a lot of this issues By if he communicating, brought her, her into in. it a little bit more and not like creating that wall between your friends and your partner. That's very childish yes. to me. That's very like high school dating. And the well, yeah. When oh wait, I was okay, in okay. Age. Well, hold on, hold on, okay. Well, no, that no, I now I think that I might have this wrong. A little backstory. He is a friend that comes over pretty much weekly. Yeah. So then she says, and he won't answer, return my texts or calls. So no, I, I don't think that the friend Oh, so it is just at the, the, the boyfriend house. has his own house. Yes. Right. We've she got lives that. somewhere else. Right. Yeah. So the, it is that she is texting and calling while she knows the friend is over. It's not that he's ignoring her in person, okay. though that is what happened on oh. this night. Okay. And this is my read OP. And again, I'm on your side. I you know, I really like this submission. I can tell you're a sweet, thoughtful person. I, I just do see, not to diagnose you, but I think you're being a little codependy here. And it Yes, no, because look, they had this night planned for his birthday. He did not communicate with her at all that his friend was going to come over. And biggest ding of all, he didn't get her any yep, food. That's a big, that's but a big that's ding. why my read here is, and maybe I'm conspiracy theory, and I want you to win OP, but it just kind of feels like... OP kind of had a whole weekend with them and then kind of forced themselves into this thing that didn't really No, seem then he he is an adult. He could have said, actually, I just want to spend time with my friends. Uh, we she had a great weekend together. That. I actually think it would be better. He didn't communicate this at all. He's an adult. He can do that. And I'm this okay. is okay. I it's not needy. You cannot he's twenty eight. He's twenty eight? Yeah, and she's twenty three. Okay, I thought he was twenty five and she was twenty three. No, I missed. I just, I feel like OP is putting so much into this that they are bound to be disappointed. No, but I can. No, she literally said, "When, like, what should we do for your actual birthday?" And he's like, "I don't know. Come over and let's hang out." And then he didn't tell her that he just wanted to chill with his friends, and she like came over as planned, and he didn't have any food for her, which is insane. That's a huge whiff. That's and so I would be stupid. like, "Okay, I'm just gonna leave then." Yeah, and. 
No, that's, that's boyfriend cool. rule number one. You 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 get that's food, your... you bring food. Like Definitely. I will I will ask my partner, hey, are you hungry? When I'm going through somewhere, and even if she says no, I'm still getting an order of fries because <laughs> I'm protecting my fries at that point. That's smart. That's, that's like, smart. just like I got you covered. Yeah. Um, I look. It's a miscommunication th- is, thing, and it was on. It's on him. This she is did the harshest. Wrong. This is the harshest thing that I have to say on this situation. And I I want the listener to know this is coming from a place of honest care about you as a person. I don't, it doesn't sound like your boyfriend is that into you mm-hmm. at this point. I think that's a clean read. And I'm sorry to say it, but this is, I'm telling you as an impartial observer, when people are into their partners, they make them a part of things. When they are, when if you're feeling ignored, if you're feeling invisible, Maybe he's it sounds like he's using you for comfort. And that's the harshest thing I have to say to this dude is this sounds like a dude who is using his partner as just a a nice, cushy way to make his life easier. And I don't think he's valuing who you are as a person and what you need. And I think maybe the neediness, Danny, that you're seeing, that might be her begging him. Hey, can I be a part? Like, please give me something. Give me something to work with because it doesn't sound like he's very emotionally available. No, it, it, you're right. It sounds like he's way more interested in getting his KDR up with the boys. Mm-hmm. And it is uh, very high school. Like my high school boyfriend used to like just have me come over and just watch him play video games. Go off, Shannon. And I was too. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, too. Mm, not confident enough to be like, no, I don't enjoy this at all. But he would, it would, it would literally just be like me just watching him playing games, which was, can be super I, lame. I thought it was so lame, but that's terrible. It, it depends. It depends on the person. Um, we've, I've lucked out where um, Jackie and I both really enjoy games, and like the best way to decompress for both of us is just like she's on her Switch, she's on Dreamlight Valley, she's making a Disney Wonderland. I'm playing God of War. I'm taking out the the drawers and and boy sure. and having sure. fun with fun with that and you know every now and then she'll look up and be like wow that's so pretty and then she'll show me her dreamlight valley and be like wow look at goofy being a fucking idiot over there and we just have a grand old time but if you're not into video games and your partner is super into it there has to be a boundary there yeah well the, and there's no like remote control for me to play either you know yeah. like yeah i was just sitting there like okay can we like go have sex or something <laughs> <laughs> i'm so bored <laughs> i'm i'm offering you sex yes to do this. <laughs> you're you're picking this I'm angry at how like Norman Rockwell of 2022 Jake's relationship is. It's just like <laughs> I'm on my, she's on her Switch and I'm on my Xbox. Uh, you get the, no whatever PS5. PS5. What is it? No, I don't care. Or I really PC? don't. PC. What is it's it? A PS5 it's a PS5 and a PC. PS5 so that's my gear. PC, but. Anyway, I got nobody. Anyway, OP, <laughs> listen. Uh, uh, so unhappy. No, no. I think that uh, I think I think I think Jake, you 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 put the you nailed this thing. And OP, I think this can be an addictive thing to be part of because maybe he's giving you a little a little love every now and again. But it seems like. All, all I would say is as definitely put in less. Put in less and see I, where that goes. I would, I've, I've not said the show's catch. One Here of we the go. Shows catch He's about to drop it, like, folks. I want to say it drop it, baby. Drop it. Break up with him. Boom! Mm. AITA for talking about boyfriend. Oh, that felt boyfriend. good. That felt good? That felt good. That felt, good? I felt, that felt powerful. I mean, OP, you seem like a gem, and I, I'm I'm so single. AITA for telling my boyfriend my feelings were hurt on his birthday. I think we're all lined up. On, well, I guess we didn't actually, actually we talk. We didn't actually talk this? about the mechanics of this. So I, then, let's talk broadly, just because I think we've analyzed this on a, in a very, very specific way. But I do think you should try on someone's birthday not to not to stir any shit. I will say that generally. Yeah. I think OP has the right intuition with that. Yes, you're right. You're never wrong to communicate how you feel, but you're going to get more results when you pick. The a spot time. where you time and place. I time and place. will push back on this that you're never wrong to communicate when you feel. I think you can. You should be judicious well, about this. You should be judicious, but I'm okay. saying it's the the act of telling somebody this is how I feel. You can do that in very poor ways, which I don't think I don't think OP did. I think OP maybe well sh- give give it twelve hours. I would have given this twelve. Well, hours. to be fair to OP though, to be to be really a hundred percent fair to OP. OP actually said. I calmly explained. I had da, 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 he apologized. I could tell. Or no, no, sorry, sorry. He told me to share anyway. I told him my feelings were hurt, but I didn't want to start anything. Gave, gave them the green light. 
And yep. then, and, and I'm sorry. And I think this is a big, a big thing with people. And this has been a big boundary learning for me. It's like, you'll do that thing where I'd be like, Oh, Jake Shannon, I got to tell you guys something. You guys like, Whoa, what? And I'm like, I, you know what? I actually, I, I shouldn't tell you. And uh, yes, a, I was thinking that. Yeah. A lot of people will go, no, you have to tell me now. No, I fucking don't. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I did clickbait. I'm guilty of clickbaiting. Yeah, the but clickbaiting thing. You don't have to tell anybody fucking anything. And if they give you permission to tell them, then they're opening the wormhole. You know? Yeah. Like, but I don't believe in that. That's their impulse control. Yeah, but I, I don't think it, she shouldn't. She just shouldn't have said, well, I don't want to talk about it on, my, on your birthday. Well, my BF could tell I was upset and he asked me what was wrong. And then I think this is very fair, very, very fair and very mature of OP. They said, look, my feelings are hurt, but we don't need to go into it. That's, yeah, that's basically true. what they said. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that it took a lot of emotional maturity, OP, for you to recognize that that was the situation you were in. You got the green light to share how you felt. And it's on the person receiving the information at that point. So I y'all, I, I, I feel for you, OP. I can tell there's a lot of care. You really care about this human being mm -hmm. that you're telling us about. And it, it's what's making me sad here is that it doesn't feel like they're is priority and how no. they are treating you. Yeah. And I, I misread it, OP. I think the fact that he didn't get you food is like really shit. Huge, yeah. huge red flag. He like completely forgot you were even coming over. Didn't even clock it. It's And that's that's why I was saying be careful with how you enjoy the hobby of video games because while I love it and think it's a wonderful art form, it is very easy for the, it to look like a masturbatory practice to people who don't understand it or don't get it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm against all forms of diminishing people's interest because you don't get it. Um, but dude, like boyfriend, if you happen to hear this man, like you gotta get your partner involved. If you're choosing to spend time like that, like figure mm -hmm. out some way to make it a, a mutual experience. Well, I think he was being agreeable maybe, but he knew that in the back of his head, he was going to have this night. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. He should have just been honest with her. ATA for telling my boyfriend my feelings were hurt on his birthday. I think we all agree it's NTA and he is. Yeah. Yep. Guys, please rate, review, subscribe. Join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash AITA pod. All right. We're going to wrap up on this one. AITA for accidentally starting a rumor about my teacher. When I was in high school in 2015, I had a teacher with a very bald, very shiny head. <laughs> nice. He was a bit odd, Who but didn't? very nice. His class was super boring, and this led the students whispering a lot about his weird habits, like saying Ayo a lot and wearing weird ties. One day we noticed his head was shining extra brightly, and a friend of mine mentioned it to me. As a joke, I said that was because every morning he buffed his head with a car buffer and shine wax. <laughs> I totally forgot about it. But two years later, as a senior, I had another class with him. And one of the classmates, upon finding out, said, you know, he buffs his head with a car buffer, right? And I realized that I had accidentally started a rumor that came all the way back around to me. Amazing. I That's thought this was hilarious. Amazing. But another two years after I went, I was in college and started seeing a guy I went to high school with. I told him the story and he was astonished that I was the one who started the rumor and said he had heard it, but didn't suspect me because it was a mean thing to do. <laughs> but I didn't mean to and I don't see the harm really, but maybe I'm just the asshole AITA. That is a pretty toothless rumor <laughs> yeah. to start about somebody. And you didn't, she didn't even mean to do it. It's just like, yeah, you just said it as a joke and that is a great example of the piranha tank that is high school of like, you give them even a little drop of blood, everybody's gonna go nuts <laughs> over it. Yeah. Did you guys have anything like this at your school? Any like absurd thing that I'm looking so back excited on to share this oh, okay. okay let's hear it this was man this was 20 fucking years ago at least I feel so old saying that but it was very bizarre and and there was a couple basically that had come to work at the school a husband and a wife and she was like the librarian and he was like the handyman or whatever it was some like zany combination and the rumor was that he had extreme constipation and that the wife had used a fork to get the constipation to solve Shut the constipation. Shut up. Mm -hmm. A fork of gospel. all things. That was just gospel it, it at just, the school. It was an instant fact, and it was something that I've been unable to forget. And I'm like, it was so oh, visceral. No. Has, so none of... so. To answer this another way, no one at your high school was. This is not high school. This was grade school. Grade school. Okay, that makes more sense because I grade school makes a lot more sense because I was going to say no one at this high school has ever seen what a butthole looks like because a fork that's not going to work. That's just not going to be butter knife. Maybe. Well, I Still think the next fun. the next question was Should have been a spoon. which end of the fork. Well, and I think the I believe the person handle. said I don't remember oh. or I don't know. 
You know, <laughs> that's out of my purview. All I know is that it happened. It was a fork. Well, yeah. it couldn't even work from the other end. It, well, I, I don't know that it couldn't work, but you know, I mean, I've tried it obviously now, <laughs> but, uh, cause really let's go right. By the way, it is actually a dastardly thing that makes a lot of bizarre. Cause you're like, they went to the kitchen to solve this problem. Yeah. And then, so that, that makes their whole house seem dirty and disgusting and contaminated. Mm. And I, and I'm like, where did they get this? Well, also, there's literally no way this rumor could be true because why would this information ever get out? Why would it get out? Why would this be? This is solution 479 to constipation. <laughs> yeah. Like, how did we There's get no here? There's no way it even, it happened. It's, There's no way. I, I feel like kids have this incredible capacity to, like, just casually say the most bonkers, wild ass horse shit you ever heard yeah. and just say it like, that's that's the truth. Mm. That's what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something about the confidence that kids can say stuff like that with that inspires other kids of just like, well, it's got to be true. They wouldn't say that. And like, did every my elementary school had that one kid who just lied about everything and oh, would like always kid. have like some incredible like it was usually centered around video games, but sometimes oh it would just God, be like, no man, that uh that that rock over there, you know how that that rock is like it's got that name that's hard to read in there. Jesus wrote his name in that rock, and like. Everybody in the everybody in our elementary school is a Christian school, but everybody's just like, "Wow, yeah, Jesus really was here." Mm. That's so wild. And the school was built in like 1947. <laughs> so they're, uh, <laughs> they're but yeah, those lying kids in elementary school. But high high school, like it's such a toothless rumor. It's kind of just like, well, she didn't even mean to do it. Yeah, it, it, you're right, and I think the toothlessness. So I actually want to zoom in then on the guy who said that it was mean and got kind of moralistic about it, and I think that can be a thing that people do when they're. Yeah. I mean, we were having a debate about this. When people feel they have the moral high ground, they can get yeah, very mean. harsh mm -hmm. and mean, right? And so he kind of came at her like, oh, that's shocking. And that was such a mean thing to do. I mean, I, I guess they didn't really go in that hard, according to what OP wrote here. But I just think that's a thing people can do. Oh, absolutely. I've so, been I've I've been guilty of that in my life of like when you feel like you have the ethical high ground, it's you don't even realize that it's like easy to slip into that pompous tone of voice and it's it's something that you know i think you need to keep it in check because sometimes like if if you're somebody who identifies really heavily with ethical behavior mm -hmm. um when you know you're ethically in the right you can lose the fact like hey you still need to sell what you still need to sell what it is you have to say in a way that other people can buy yeah and frankly like if you're already in college and you're still trying to guilt somebody about like i can't believe you said that that teacher made his head extra shiny with a, car believe, buffer. Uh, with a car buffer. Is that even possible? Yeah, no. It's, it's like it's like uh, it's like honestly, it's cartoon. It's a cartoon joke. Like, yeah, like, that's I think Rocco true. The fact that so any of these kids yes. took this seriously is like a ding on them. It's so stupid. Like, how boring was it's this high joke. school? It's a joke. It's a fucking stupid joke. Get a drug and dealer. Also, have some actual drama in your school. Yeah. Jesus. Thank and you. also, she says, "I told him the story," and he was astonished. That's when it started the rumor. So she obviously told him the story of like, "How silly is this?" I told this joke and then like two years later I found out that it's a rumor going around so she told him the story that she even said I didn't mean to do this yeah. it was a joke and then he's still like I couldn't believe that was you I can't believe you'd do that like how wow annoying annoying fuck this guy yeah, yeah. Really stupid stop dating him by the way speaking of cartoons you know what i was thinking about is uh like how how cats it will fight on a cartoon mm -hmm. and it turns into like a giant the dust oh, like, a yeah. da like and it's like <laughs> Yeah. Stars that and everything is not an exaggeration. Yeah. I have literally heard cats make the exact oh, yeah. cacophony of sound. They turn like, into, ah! they just turn into like, a ball, like fuck? roll. Yeah, I, and if they're if it's dusty, it does kick up a dust cloud. Yeah, they probably don't even need any foley on those shows. Like they actually just get cats Fine. fighting, <laughs> and, fight. and it's no exaggeration. Shannon liked it, a joke of mine. I, I this is a new yeah. joke because I was driving when I was driving to Mammoth Mountain. I seen a tumbleweed. And I just feel like whenever I see a tumbleweed, it's like seeing a celebrity, you know? Because I've seen it so many times in movies and <laughs> oh TV. Oh my God, it's tumbleweed. That tumbleweed, you were great. You know, like, you were incredible in the good, the Bible bad, and the ugly. Yes. That blew me away. Oh my God. Wait, can you pull over? Can I pull over? Can I get over? a selfie? <laughs> yeah, can I get a picture? Do you know James Corden? Fuck yeah. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <weird>. Nah. <laughs> 
AITA for accidentally starting a rumor about my teacher. I think this is a tremendous NTA. NTA. Fuck NTA this guy. And good joke. Thank honey. you for making we your school you. more interesting because, like, if that's the best you've got, if everybody knew that rumor, your school's boring as hell. You need some yeah. spice in there. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going to do one more just for dessert. Quickie. AITA for coin returning my way to $26 on a vending machine. Continuing Jake's and I's uh, kind of anti corporate thing. <laughs> I recently put $2 into a vending machine, noticed the soda I wanted was out. I hit coin return. When I did, I received seven quarters and a dollar coin for a total of two seventy five. Mm-hmm. Realizing the vending machine was glitching out, I decided to try my luck again. I kept doing this over and over and over with varying results. Sometimes the machine would spit out nickels instead of quarters. Mm-hmm. But other times I got those sweet, sweet dollar coins. Oh, yeah. In the end, I reached twenty six dollars of profit. And I stopped at this point as the machine was out of dollar coins. AITA. Abs- I, you, I would do this. You got a gift. <laughs> you got a gift from the universe. We've talked about this before. You got your attaboy for the day. And it's twenty six bucks. Twenty six like, bucks. Buy some Chipotle. Really? And like, you and you put in the work. Yeah. You earned this. This probably took you at least, I don't know, half an hour. You hacked the reality. Have you guys seen Interstellar? Yeah, I have. Yeah, you, you know when Matthew McConaughey is behind the veil yeah. of, and like all oh, he sees time and everything. Yeah, you were in that moment for as you the big swelling Christopher Nolan orchestra is playing as you're just like, what if I did it again? <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's dollar coins in this son bitch. <laughs> like, yeah, go keep go bleed it dry. There's nothing wrong with this big vending machine has been ripping us off out of our nickels and then three fifty for a coke. You're fucking crooked. Absurd. If you're anywhere near a beach, you better have a Lincoln in your pocket, oh or you're not God, getting the soda. It's so true. It's absurd. Oh, and you know other places that grift the convention centers. It's like six dollars for a water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We know you need it. It's regular. In there. Yeah. Water should be free or very cheap. Regulate it. Tear down Nestle. And also Love this it. guy then has to walk around the rest of his day with like $26 worth of coins in his Jingling. pocket. Jingling. Like, I would feel, I would feel like such a, it. I would feel like a man about town in that situation of just like, I got a jingle in my pocket. I'm walking down the street. And I can't yeah. eat anything I want. I <laughs> think I go farther than this too. Bank error in my favor. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. If the bank make, if somebody with billions of dollars gives you a lot on accident, no, that's on them. Fix your system. This is a form of capital. They are obviously own a bunch of vending machines it's not like oh, i'm grob greg and this is my vending machine no uh, i'm not going to point well, out no actually hmm? no wait that's atms never mind yeah people own atms yeah like my family with the parking lot money <laughs> we used to fill up atms around the parking <laughs> lot family. she's getting on the parking lot high horse the lewises are long-standing members of the parking yeah. lot yeah, <laughs> aristocrats right. yeah. but uh when i was leaving a previous job and i want to stress that like the people, the organization involved in paying me these checks was not going to miss this money at all. But on my exit check, they essentially double paid me Mm. on my last check. And without specifying anything, um, they deserved it. And they were terribly unorganized. Yeah. And that kind of thing happens. And once it's in your bank account, that's the end of that. And yeah. so, yeah, I have lucked out on this with a lot more money than 26 yeah. bucks. It wasn't an absurd amount. It was like, it was a part-time job. It was just one of those like, oh. I think also if you work somewhere, it's like you've put in your time. Yeah. Like you've like gone through the, the yeah. shit and stuff. Like let them pay you a little extra. Yeah, They're, they're, they're probably underpaying you anyway. If it wasn't, if they were. They absolutely were. Yeah. Uh, if it was that important, they wouldn't have made the mistake in the right. first place. NTA. That's the thing. I'm like, you paid your tax. You're paying a yeah. stupid tax. You designed this vending machine poorly, and now you got to pay a stupid tax. Yeah. So it is. It up. is like I do love the concept of just like who built this vending machine and how did this error yeah. happen? How <laughs> big of a deal can it be? We're gonna use the same detector for the nickels, the quarters, and dollar coins. It's fine. We're gonna save a dollar per unit. It's like the it's like the flaw in the Death Star in New Hope of just yeah. like. Well, as long as nobody puts in a quarter this specific way, there's no way that this machine could just start burping out money. <laughs> AITA for coin returning my way to twenty six dollars out of vending machine. We're saying no assholes here. No assholes. Yeah, no here. assholes here. Except for big vending. Big vending. Stop asshole. charging so much just because you can, you monsters. True. Guys, that is the app. Have a very merry Christmas, all y'all. Much love, and we'll see you next time. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Hey. And a half.
Happy New Year. So on the recent podcast episode, yes, I, I told the story of you drinking the piss. It's true, isn't it? It is very true, yes. It is true. I did. And I how did it taste? I like piss. But what thinking, did you think immediately? Though? I thought that it was I, my my thought at the time was it, this is an alcohol that has gone wrong. That somehow something <laughs> that soured the alcohol. And thinking back is ludicrous, but those were my thoughts at the time. And until it was revealed to you that did you go, this could be piss. I didn't know it could be piss. I didn't know what it was, but I, I thought it was really nasty tasting alcohol until I was told oh, that it was this was an alcohol. And how do you feel knowing that you drank? My cousin's piss. I, I feel this kind of a disgust inside of me and that I got fucked. <laughs> <laughs>